Hello channel, this is Vincent with Vincent Gaming and I am bringing you the Gold Bullion Vendor video for Vault 79, the Secret Service Vendor Rags. This here, of course, is the outside of the building that houses the elevator for Vault 79 and takes you straight to Rags after you've completed that quest line. And here you see Vault 79 on the map. And to the lower left, southwest, Vault 76. So you can see Vault 76 and then Fort Atlas. And then northeast from Fort Atlas is Vault 79. So if you fast travel, this is basically where you end up. And you just walk right in through here, take a quick left. Go in the door, call the elevator, and go down to the Gold Vault Operations Room. Here we go. All right, in order to get the rig, you just go straight out the elevator, down the stairs, take a left, and the rig is right there. Alright, and what we're going to see here is what Regs has for sale. You see that uh, he's using, or I am using the Hellcat power armor on this character. So you see the Hellcat and Pepper Shaker modifications are at the top of the list. And that's because those are the only things that I've bought with this character. So the Calibrated Shocks, of course, increased carry weight capacity. I covered that in the previous video. The cooling vent is the same as the power armor for every other cooling vent. The motion assist servos, again, the same as the motion assist servos for every other power armor. And the pepper shaker stuff, I went through all of the pepper shaker mods in the previous videos, so we're just going to skip right past all of those. And then the Brotherhood Recon armor. So. This particular one is the Aerodynamic Armor Arms, which causes power attacks to drain less AP. The Asbestos ones reduce energy damage and uh, provide immunity to being set on fire. The Biochem Mesh increases the duration of chems by 50%. The Braced Armor Arms reduce the additional melee damage while blocking. The Recon Brawling Armor improves unarmed damage. The Recon Buttress provides exceptional damage resistance, radio resistance, resistance, and energy resistance. And uh, this is the legs, arms, torso. The cushion reduces falling damage. Custom fitted causes sprinting to taste less, take less AP. Deep pocketed improves carrying capacity. Again, armors, arms and legs. Dense armor, torso. Greatly reduces damage from explosions. Hardened provides superior damage resistance for radiation resistance and energy resistance. And again, we have the arms, legs, and torso. The recon jet pack. It uh, provides a jet assisted boost while jumping. This is the jetpack for the non power armor folks. There's actually two of these now. Used to be you could only get this with the Secret Service, but now you can get it with the Brotherhood Recon Armor also. This is the mod that applies to the torso, so you have to have the Brotherhood torso in order to apply this mod to it. Uh, if you want to go Secret Service, then you have to have the Secret Service torso in order to provide this mod to the Secret Service, not this mod provide the Secret Service jetpack to the Secret Service armor. We'll cover that when I get there. Anyway, Brotherhood Recon Bloodline reduces radiation resistance, or increases radiation resistance, reduces radiation damage. And uh, armor, you know, arms and legs, torso. Lighter build reduces weight. Muffled reduces detection from moving. Padded, again, reduces damage from explosions. Pneumatic reduces the magnitude of incoming staggers. 
pocketed as opposed to depocketed. Improves carrying capacity but less. Sleek increases movement speed while sneaking. Stabilized provides a more steady scope. Strength and reduces slim damage. Tempered is improved damage resistance and more tempered. Ultra light build and it greatly reduces weight and increases AP bonus. Recon weighted causes unarmed melee attacks. Sorry, unarmed and melee attacks to ignore some of the target's armor. Welded gives better damage resistance. And then we have the Crusader gear. So that's a lot of Brotherhood stuff. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break this up and provide timestamps. So if uh, folks are interested in just a particular piece of gear, then just go to the timestamps. All right. Okay, and moving on to the second part of this video. Uh, still covering rigs, still at ball 79. Uh, looking at the Crusader pistol. This is a pistol that you can get from running daily ops. This particular mod changes the ammo type to the 5.56 caliber. The cryogenic receiver causes the targets to freeze and reduces movement speed for 5 seconds and adds the cryogenic damage. The extended magazine, of course, causes the reload speed to go down, but the ammo capacity to go up. The fusion receiver changes the damage type to energy, just like the pepper shaker that I covered earlier in a previous video. The long barrel gives you better range. The pyro receiver adds fire damage. The reflex light gives better focus, to focus and sighted accuracy. The short scope gives improved magnification. The suppressor silences the weapon and gives exceptional per shot recoil and improved recoil control, but it reduces the range. And that's all the Crusader pistol stuff. Let's do a double check real quick. I thought there was a prime. Okay, next section of regs is gold bullion vendor inventory. See here the Goss pistol. It is a Goss weapon that you can get without having to have maximum work with crater or foundation. And it has an aligned short barrel for increased recoil and hip fire accuracy, but inferior durability. Drum magazine, which gives you superior ammo capacity. Glow sights, which gives improved focus. Hardened receiver, which reduces the durability but gives superior damage. Refined receiver, which also reduces the durability but improves accuracy and damage and hit fire accuracy. Reflex sight, which gives improved magnification uh, over the glow sights superior sighted accuracy. The suppressed barrel, just like every other suppressor, silences the weapon, gives great per shot recoil, recoil control and accuracy, however, reduces the durability and range. The vicious receiver also reduces durability, gives better accuracy, hip fire accuracy, and critical shot damage. And you would think based on the way that this is set up that that would be all of the mods. However, there is a prime receiver mod. We're going to skip past all the rest of this stuff here real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. Prime Goss pistol receiver, 2 hook unit gold bullion, superior damage, bonus damage to Scorched Beast and Scorched, takes the Alter Sight ammunition. You can also see the Prime Plasma Caster capacitor here. Same thing. Superior damage, bonus damage to Scorch Beast and Scorch. We're going to try covering the Plasma Caster. And here we go, Plasma Caster. The Alliance Sniper Barrel 
Superior range, improved recoil and hipfire accuracy. Calibrated capacitor gives superior critical shot damage. Pulse capacitor reduces the damage, drains enemy power armor batteries. I've never found this useful. True capacitor, uh, superior hipfire accuracy. True long barrel, improved range, superior hipfire accuracy. And that's it for the plasma caster, except for the prime. So again, prime plasma caster capacitor. So it seems like it's a really small amount of things for the plasma caster. This was a new weapon in Fallout 76. And we've noticed that most of the new weapons don't have too many mods. So that's the plasma caster and the Gauss pistol. Again, I'm going to be putting timestamps down in the video description. So let me know if you guys have any questions about what I'm covering in the timestamps. Thanks. Alright, going to be covering the Hellcat Power Armor mods from Regs as promised. This is me at the Vault 79 Gold Bullion Vendor still. And we're currently looking at the Hellcat Calibrated Shocks. Those add additional 50 pounds of carryable weight to each leg for a total of 100. A cooling vent motion assist servos and the reason I've been putting off covering this is because since I own some of it it's not all clustered together so we're gonna go on down here blood cleanser which reduces chance for addiction from drugs core assembly which increases the action point refresh speed and I just want to be clear here for all of the power armor almost all the mods are the same some of them have jetpacks, some don't, but other than that, other than paint schemes, they're essentially all the same mods. Emergency protocols, below 20% health, speed increased 25%, incoming damage was reduced 50%. One of the reason I'm covering that is because I covered the Strangleheart power armor. I'm currently covering Hellcat, and there's some other power armor here that I'm going to cover and just cover in what the mods do over and over again. This is not useful for you guys, and it's kind of boring for me. Hydraulic bracers, which increase the unarmed damage. Internal database increases intelligence. The jetpack, of course, gives you a jetpack. The kinetic dynamo is taking damage recharges action points. Kinetic servos increases action point refresh speed while moving. Medic pump which detects it during combat and automatically uses a stem pack when health is low. Hellcat optimized bracers, which reduces action point cost for power attacks. Optimized servos, reduces action point cost for sprinting. Overdrive servos, increases sprint speed at additional action point cost. Reactive fleets, reflects 50% of melee damage back on the attacker. Recon sensors, sighted aiming marks enemies with a compass pip. Busty knuckles, unarmed attacks cause bleeding damage. Sensor array increases perception. Stealth boy adds a stealth field. Hard getting HUD is the visor highlight living targets. This works like the Mentats that you can get. I believe it's Berry Mentats. Tells the bracers causes energy damage to be added to unarmed attacks. Tesla coils deals energy damage to nearby enemies. Vatra matrix overlay increases the VAT's hit chance. And that's all of the Hellcat power armor stuff. So we're going to skip some of this stuff here real quick. And the reason I wanted to cover this together is because of what I said a minute ago, which is that pretty much all of the mods are exactly the same. So here you see the solar armor. No, sorry, that's not the one I want. Strangler Heart. I covered the Strangler Heart more extensively in a previous video, but I just want you guys to see how much this stuff costs. So the chest piece is 1250, the helmet is 1650, the left arm is a thousand, the legs of course are also a thousand, the right arm and leg are both a thousand. So that's all the Strangler Heart stuff there, and there aren't any additional mods. However, what I found when I bought the Strangler Heart gear 
and built it was that if I already knew as a for instance how to make a jetpack then I could make one for the strangler heart if I already knew how to make the and this is why I'm scrolling up here as fast as I can so I can show you what I'm talking about the calibrated shocks then I knew how to make the calibrated shocks for the strangler heart the cooling vent the motion assist servos the strangler heart stuff you know when I want to make that I knew those four strangler heart already so I don't know if that works if you learn it after you've already made a set of strangler heart armor or not um, but if you know it before then you learn it when you build and buy the strangler heart pieces and of course the T65 stuff is another set of power armor and you can see it's of course got all the same stuff as the Hellcat still the blood cleanser still the calibrated shocks still the cooling vent which causes fusion cores to drain 5% slower still the core assembly still the emergency protocols all the same stuff we saw before and of course the helm 1650 bracers the jetpack is still 2000 connect dynamo kinetic servos left arm left leg just like the hellcat strangle heart stuff is both a thousand of course the, you don't have to buy this for the hellcat you earn it through the quest and that's actually the only way to get it right now but if you did have to buy it i imagine it'd be the same cost because it's the same cost across the strangler heart and the t65 the medic pump the motion assist servos the optimized bracers the optimized servos the overdrive servos these are all exactly the same as the hellcat mods that i covered earlier the reactive plates the right arm is a thousand just like the the strangler heart the leg of course also a thousand thrusty knuckles the stealth boy, the Tesla bracers, the Tesla coils, the torsos 1250, and that's the last of the T65 stuff. And that's actually the last of the power armor gear that you can buy from Rags. So if you have specific questions about the power armor stuff you can buy from Rags, let me know. I'm gonna have. Uh, timestamps in the description for the different pieces of gear and we're going to cover some more gear in the next section of the video all right this is going to be the section about the hellstorm missile launcher the hellstorm missile launcher is a daily ops reward you have to run daily ops in order to get it and before you can get it you have to complete the brotherhood of steel quest line that first introduces it so if you've been running daily apps for a while and you haven't got the drop yet that could be why or could just be you're unlucky so once you have it though you can come here to Rex and you can buy all the different mods for that missile launcher the first one on the list is the chirogenic payload which causes the rockets to gain freezing damage of course it does uh, Chirogenic explosion does freezing damage. The launcher enhanced blast payload improves the ammo capacity. The long night vision scope gives both night vision and superior magnification. The napalm mod causes the rockets to gain fire damage to their explosions. The plasma mod causes them to gain energy damage. The short scope here, short recon scope, tracks targets and improves magnification. Now this is not the same as the targeting computer when it says tracks targets. What it really means is that just like every other recon scope, it puts a little pip above the target in question. So you still have to manually aim and it's still a fire um, and forget weapon in the sense that it will not target the monster you're shooting at if the monster moves and that's all the health term stuff so 
you can see here some Secret Service armor. We're going to cover that a little bit later, but uh, I want to make sure that we don't miss it because it's out of order. So you're going to see all the stuff between the regular Secret Service mods and this lighter piece here. So these are actually in alphabetical order, so if you're having trouble finding something that you haven't already bought, all the stuff that you haven't bought is in alphabetical order. So this of course is the first mod in that alphabetical order list for Secret Service Armor, that's the lighter build. It reduces weight. Then we skip all the rest of the stuff and you get the Secret Service Aerodynamic Armor mod, which causes power attacks to drain less AP. Again, we're going to see almost exactly all the same mods for the Secret Service stuff as we saw for the Brotherhood stuff. So I'm not going to go too deep into them. The Brotherhood stuff is earlier on this video. If you're wondering about a specific piece of mod gear, it should be covered there. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Of course, Asbestos, Biochem Mesh, Braced, Brawling, Buttressed, and of course you have the armors and for both the arms and the legs. The superior damage resistance one, in this case, is buttressed again. And then the chest piece. Now the chest piece is 1250. And then the cushioned legs, custom fitted, deep pocketed, and more deep pocketed. And then dense armor. Hardened armor, still superior damage resistance, as opposed to buttressed, which also says superior. Obviously, one's better than the other. Hardened, hardened, hardened. The helmet, the jetpack, and just like the other jetpack, you have to have the armor, the torso armor, and you have to apply this mod to the Secret Service torso armor. You can't apply this mod to the Brotherhood one as a for instance, so make sure you don't buy the wrong one if you're going to get a full set of Secret Service or a full set of Brotherhood and you want the jetpack armor mod to go with it. you got to make sure to buy the mod that goes with the armor set that you're trying to put together. All right, Secret Service lead lined, and the left arm, the left leg, these are both 750. The lighter build, padded armor, manic armor, pocketed armor, pocketed armor, the right arm 750, the right leg is 750, sleek armor, stabilized armor, tempered armor, tempered uh, armor for the legs and the arms and the torso, ultra light, and then we get into the Secret Service Under Armour. Now this is not part of the standard Secret Service set. Okay, the Under Armour stuff is actually worn, as it suggests, under the armor. So you can wear both a set of Under Armour and a set of regular non-power armor armor. And you can mix them out. So if you wanted the Secret Service Under Armour but the Brotherhood of Steel regular armor, you can do that. Okay. So, Secret Service weighted armor, Secret Service welded armor, welded legs, welded torso, and then the stuff for the Secret Service under armor mods. So this is the shielded lining for the Secret Service under armor, and improves strength, perception, and endurance. And Just to cover the rest of the stuff here real quick. The treated lining secret service under armor improves strength and endurance. If you're gonna go one way, I would suggest the other one because it improves more stats. And then the ultra light build secret service armor for the secret service armor. And that is all the secret service stuff. So we're going to cover the rest of the stuff here 
in the next section of the video. If you have any questions about this section of the video, please let me know. And again, if you want a deeper dive on the different mods, I can cover them separately, but most of them should be covered in enough detail in the earlier section of this video. Let me know in the comments. Still with Reg, still going over the things that he has for sale. Now looking at the solar armor gear. So the solar armor is a set of non-power armor armor that has a set bonus. They've modified the set bonus so it's not as good as it was when it first came into the game. Um, and in my opinion, it's not as good as the Brotherhood of Steel or the Secret Service gear because you can't get a jetpack for it. Uh, having said that, uh, if you've already started on it, of course, then you might want to try finishing it instead of putting the effort into you trying to get all of the gear that you would need for the Secret Service or the Brotherhood of Steel. Because obviously, you know, uh, all of it takes gold bullion. So, uh, the solar arm pieces, as you can see, the chest piece is a thousand, the left arm, leg, right arm, and leg are all 750. And then we're going to skip right on down to the next set, which is Thorn Armor. Again, this is another one of the older sets in the game that sort of has been surpassed by the Brotherhood of Steel and the Secret Service armor because you can get jetpack for these. Um, so this also has a set bonus, but uh, it's also been nerfed and does not seem to be as good as the Secret Service or the Brotherhood of Steel gear is at this time. So that's uh, still 1,750 for the chest piece or the arms and legs. And then the rest of the stuff that Rex has is the Alt-94 Scout Armor Mask. You used to only be able to get this out of Alt-94, now you can get it here. And then the War Glaive mods. This is a weapon that you get as part of the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. When you can get some of the stuff for it out of daily apps, or you can buy the modifications here. As you see, the Cairo Blade mod freezes targets and causes reduced movement. It also adds Cairo damage. The Flaming Blade causes the target to burn for five seconds and adds additional fire damage. The plasma blade adds energy damage and critical effects, plasma critical effects, and then shock blade is just electrical damage. And that is actually all the stuff that Rex has. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you uh, have comments about the editing job that I did, please let me know. If questions about specific pieces of gear, please let me know. And if you want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks.